Hey there, I'm Aaron Franklin, doing the old Franklin barbecue here. I'm going to show you guys the most simple way to do a turkey for the holidays on a Franklin barbecue pit. So there's a lot of different ways. As they say, there are a thousand ways to skin a turkey. I'm pretty sure that's a term. Yeah, I've heard it once or twice. I'm gonna do the most basic possible way and then let you guys layer in whatever you want. We're gonna get right into this because, well, we don't wanna waste any time. Hello, old friend. I'm just gonna stand here for a minute and I'm gonna close my rings with my arm. So, pop this thing down. These little turkey poppers that come in some of these turkeys, dumb. Don't even mess with it. And oh, what's this? You could save it. I'm not gonna mess with it though. Ooh, sorry about that. Anyway, I'm just gonna trim up a little bit of this skin that's hanging out around here. This is the breast side. We're gonna start with this turkey on the barbecue pit with the breast up and towards the smokestack. That's kind of the sweet spot on those things. All the airflow, smoke's kind of moving around. You want to avoid putting oil on this. Most of the bad flavors, you know, I'm gonna correct myself and go and say, almost all the bad flavors in smoke are oil soluble. So we want to stick to water. We want the good flavors of a clean burning fire to actually stick to the turkey. And that's all water-based. That's, you know, water soluble particulates coming out of a good fire. So we're gonna leave this water. We're not gonna put any oil, any butter, any of that mess on there yet. But yes, we will use butter later. I'm gonna keep my dirty hand with the glove but I am going to pull off this glove so I have, hey, guess what? A clean hand underneath, and this is gonna handle the salt. When you're doing stuff like this, a dry piece of meat is gonna work a lot better than a wet one. So you could pull out a hair dryer if you really wanted to. You could dry the skin. This is where dry brining really, really works out good because if you dry brine something, you salt it, you put it in the refrigerator overnight or for you know, maybe 30 plus hours, and it'll pull out the moisture and then the meat will start to reabsorb the moisture, but the airflow in the refrigerator actually dries out the surface, which helps you get the Maillard reaction, which is all the roasty good flavors that we're looking for. We're gonna do a little bit of an opposite approach here because we're lacking refrigerator space and there's pure chaos around the holidays and everybody's got pies and stuff they're trying to cram in weird spots. So we're just gonna pull it out of the bag, do it. But what we're gonna do and how we're gonna treat this a little bit differently is we're gonna start off with a really low temperature and we're gradually gonna dry out the surface in the barbecue pit as opposed to in a refrigerator. So we're kind of trying to cheat that out a little bit, but non-presentation side, keeping my clean hand clean. Get back in there, get in there. And also, I'm just doing salt because it's simple. Um, if I was really, you know, gonna have some fun, say, I would probably use something like a Lowry's or like a Cajun seasoning. Cajun stuff and turkeys just kind of go together great. But for this, just for the simplicity of it, we're going straight salt. So ready to go on the cooker. Got a fire started already. Got the barbecue pit going. It's probably sitting at about, oh, I don't know, 248. Gonna, ooh, cold. Very careful not to scrape the top. Just gonna put that right there. Want the breast right here. Let the fire do its thing, keep it pretty low. We don't wanna dry out any edges prematurely, but we're trying to dry out the surface as a whole. We're trying to get a good color on it. When it starts to dry out a little bit, we're gonna start hitting it with some uh, apple cider vinegar just to spritz it. And again, you could do anything. It doesn't really matter. Um, a little bit of sugar is not a terrible thing, but I would avoid fat. So keep it kind of water-based if you can. Uh, but anywho, we better shut the lid. Say goodbye to my glove. And uh, yeah, just gonna watch fire for probably about an hour, hour and a half before we end up wrapping. Just give it a good little spritz. So when we put it on, we put the breast towards the stack, but essentially every few minutes, I've just been going in there, maybe 20, 30 minutes or so, give it a little spritz and I've just been rotating it around because I don't want it to get too much heat. What we're really looking for here is for the breast to temp out at about 130, 135 degrees when we wrap it. So we're getting color. We need to make those two timelines kind of line up. I'm gonna take a little temp on that. My old trusty thermometer. A little shy. So we're gonna give it a little bit more time since the color's just about where we want it. I'm just gonna kind of keep spritzing it while letting the inside kind of catch up a little bit. 
the uh, turkey's looking pretty good, getting kind of dark. Wait for the breast internal temperature to get up to about 130, 135, 133 and a third should be fine. Um, gonna get a couple things laid out. So I pulled out three pounds of butter and this is what we use at the restaurant. This is a butter blend. So if you use real butter, it'll have a tendency to brown and get sweeter. Uh, it could burn a lot easier and we're gonna be pushing the temperatures a little hot on the backside of this thing. So I prefer a butter blend one half foil pan. This is for when all the butter melts, the turkey's wrapped, all the juices run out. You don't lose them because we're gonna use this later when we plate it. And then, trust your thermometer so we know when to wrap. And then I'm gonna use two of these. Now these are just normal, you know, cooking thermometers. Uh, it's a chef alarm, uh, but one's gonna go in the breast and one's gonna go in the thigh. Got everything ready, we're gonna tear off some foil. I'm gonna go with four pieces right now. Just gonna go ahead and get that hanging out. Everything laid out here. I don't think we're gonna need anything else. I could be wrong, but so far so good. So I'm gonna start pushing temperatures just a little bit harder, uh, just cause I'm gonna smear this butter all over the turkey, wrap it up. It's gonna be out of the cooker for a few minutes. So right now you might wanna kinda of push it. It's kinda of the same as wrapping a brisket. Anyway, but you always kinda of wanna keep an eye on it, look back, um, give it a spritz if it's looking a little, little dark. That's yeah, looking a little dark. That should be fine. Um, I'm gonna go check the fire real quick. I'm gonna put another little piece on there. Don't want it too smoky, but I definitely wanna get some heat going and get some airflow going just to give the turkey a little bit of a nudge while we're fiddling with it outside. Um, so I'm kind of picking smaller pieces right now. Like I said, don't want it smoky. Smaller pieces are gonna give me sharper, faster heat, a little bit better airflow. So we're just kinda, we're just kinda waiting right now. In fact, it's looking pretty good. Oh yeah. Time to wrap a turkey. So I'm gonna challenge myself to a duel. So we're gonna wrap this turkey. We're gonna put the breast side down. And the reason is we want that butter to melt inside the bag. And we kind of want it to encapsulate the turkey breast because breasts kind of dry out. They're super lean. So we want as much fat around there. That's what we do at Franklin Barbecue. And that's how we're doing this too. Okay, now be really careful doing this. I lost feelings in my hands a long time ago, but you pick this up and you dip it out, it's gonna pour hot juices from the cavity all over the place. So we're just gonna do this very carefully. I think it's looking real nice. Tap the breast right there. We're looking for 133, 135 would be perfect. So it's pretty darn close. So, so pull this butter out about an hour or two ago and it's super duper soft and we want it soft because we don't want the heat from the turkey to have to melt the butter, but we also want to be able to smear it all around. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that. Yes, I know, this is weird. Kind of smear it all, get some in the cavity, let it melt, gonna roll it over. And you can tell that there's not a ton of heat on the bottom because the bottom of this doesn't have the same color as the top does. And by top, I mean the breast side. Um, and that's by design, that's the way it should be. But that's also why we're gonna flip this thing over. So we're just gonna pack about a pound. You know, I pulled out three pounds, but I really, I feel like two is more than enough. Technical terminology, I'm gonna de-glove. I'm gonna wrap this thing in pretty good. So be really careful not to tear the foil. Go right here, wrap it up that way, wrap it up that way. And it doesn't really matter how you do, oh, I know what I forgot to do. I'm take this and I'm gonna actually stick this probe in a little bit backwards. I'm gonna be very careful to get right in the middle of the thickest part of the breast right here. So I'm just gonna lay it down right there so the wire can find an easy path out of here. Then we're gonna go in. We want to get down in the thighs right there. So I'm also, I think that's a pretty good spot. Right about there. Again, I'm just going to fold that out towards the back. Just going to kind of crunch up a little bit. Back on there. Got the wires. You want to really crunch it in as much as you can. You want to get all the air gaps out of there. 
there's plenty of steam that's gonna happen. And then just as a safety precaution, we're gonna put this in a half pan. Now we're really gonna start pushing this turkey. At least that's what I'm doing. All right, and now the tricky part. These down here. So one of the cool things about the pits is this little groove in the back trim. Um, and that's for wires to poke out of. How cool. Anywho, at this point, uh, we're gonna maintain the fire about 285, maybe let it creep up closer to three. The idea is to get this turkey off as soon as you can, let it cook, let it hang out, um, but really watch the balance of the two uh, muscle groups. You know, this would be a great time to pop it in the oven if you happen to have room. So anyway, judge free zone. It doesn't really matter what the smoke is. The turkey's wrapped, it's good to go. It's not gonna get any more smoke. So if you had any bigger logs or you had any slower, denser ones that you wanna get rid of now, this is a great time. So I'm gonna start working through a couple funny sized pieces that I had earlier. Eventually we'll have a turkey to eat. Heck is that noise? Must be something going on in the house. Oh my God, it's the turkey! 4,000 degrees, looks like it's ready. No, but in all seriousness, so we're looking, we're shooting for 175. Looks like these thighs are about 178, but the breast is temping at a pretty smooth 153. So let's pull this off. I bet you it's gonna be pretty all right. Definitely gonna use a towel. This is very hot. Let's do this. And I'll be darned, that's what it looks like. The reveal is happening right now in real time. This thing's looking pretty good. I'm gonna capture the butter in a little pot. And I tell you what, the kitchen's looking pretty busy in there. So I'm gonna stick to my happy spot out here by the smoker. And I'm just gonna pop this thing in the firebox and keep a really close eye on it. But the goal is to heat up this butter and then we're just gonna spoon it over the turkey when we plate it and that's pretty much it if you needed to crisp up the skin just a little bit you could pop it back in the oven right now probably about 370 365 somewhere in there just to get the skin just right but we're going to try it with just plain old butter so oh you look marvelous i'm just going to take a couple of these logs so i'm just going to pull these off the fire and i'm just going to make a little shelf right there super no big deal but we've Still want to be really, really careful. Butter is flammable. Let's go take it to the table. Mm. Final step for this, pour a little bit of butter over the top. Let the butter pool down in there. Just get some butter on the bottom of that platter. That way when this thing gets sliced, we have a little bit of extra butter to kind of dip it in. I think it looks great. I'm excited. Uh, there's only one thing it needs one lone piece of curly parsley, so by the butter. I think we're sitting pretty on this thing. I'm gonna take it inside and get to slicing. All right, so earlier today, made a little bit of a list. We're just gonna recap everything. Put the turkey in, pulled it out, salted it. You could dry brine, you could do whatever you want. Had a fire going and it just eyeballed the salt. Put it on at eight o'clock, held it about 225 degrees for an hour and a half. And in that hour and a half, what I did was I spritzed it with a little bit of apple cider vinegar, but I also went in there and I rotated the turkey. That way it didn't get too much color on one side. You don't really want to cook it too fast, but you do want to get color. You want to dry off the skin. And then almost spot on, an hour and a half in, it hit 135 degrees on the breast. At that point, we wrapped it, lots of butter, about two pounds of room temperature butter, wrapped it up super tight, breast side down, put it in a foil pan, and then started rocking about 285 to 300. You could go a little bit hotter than this if you wanted, but it came off a little bit early. It was fine. I'd expect it in about an hour, hour and a half to come off. Let it rest for a little bit. Right here, what you could do is put the turkey back in the oven, crisp up the skin a little bit, get the butter hot, pour the butter over it, get ready to slice it, and that puts you right at noon. So there's, there's lunch for you. Well, that's pretty much it. This turkey turned out pretty darn good. I hope yours does too. Thanks for watching and have a happy holiday.